Hey, welcome back. This is Peter from the Ultimate WordPress Guide. Today I'll be showing you how to create a conversational or a type form like form like this using Elementor and PyTnet add-ons for Elementor. Now since the release of version 7, you now have a new method to create forms. You can still create both single step or multi step forms like before, but with quite a different configuration. But before we get started, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up so that others can also get to see it. Subscribe to my channel and tap the bell for notifications on all my latest content. Now let's take a look how. Okay, so this is what the form looks like on the front end. And if I jump onto the back end in the editor of the page, um, this is what you'll see. Now this is first and foremost slightly different to what you used to with the, with the old form creation. Um, in the sense that now you use a, a form embedding widget to get the form in. So you build the form in the background um, and then you embed the form onto your page. But before we get started with that, um, I want to quickly just jump over to the back end. Um, and on the plugins, you'll notice here that I'm, I'm using the developer edition. Uh, but everything I'm going to show you today uh, works just fine on the normal Elementor as well. Um, I have to also note that I am using Elementor Pro in this install, but it's not required for what I'm going to show you in terms of how to create um, this form. Uh, you do, however, need PyTnet add-ons Pro, and at the time of the recording of this video, um, I've got 7.0.6 installed. Okay, so before we get started, if you go down to the PyTnet add-ons area, there's, a, there's an area now for all forms, right? Um, and this is where you would essentially go and create your new forms. I've created, I've already created the inline fields. Um, I can call it something different. I just use the default. Um, I've already created that form, which is uh, this one. Um, but you can go and create new forms from here. And, and they've added a couple of started templates and that you can choose from. And I've, I've used this template essentially. But I'm going to show you how it's all put together. Um, and I've obviously made some changes to it as well. Right. So if I just jump back to all forms and I go into the uh, inline fields and I say edit with Elementor. So what it essentially does now is you're building a template, right? And that template um, is what you will embed on the page, right? So I've got these um, two containers. I'm using the dev environment. I'm also using the uh, container experiment, but this works equally as well on both containers and sections. So if you're not comfortable in using the experiments yet, which I'd advise not to do on a, on a production project because it is still in experimental mode. Uh, but as of 3.8, um, they have now marked containers as stable. So we should probably see that coming into the release. So you can either use a section or you can use a container as I have. Um, and in this instance, I've got a main container um, and I've added two additional containers in just to, to sort the form fields, right? So these are normal form fields. So you still have the field widgets over there. Um, and then there's also the next and the previous buttons for multi-step forms because this is a multi-step form. And what I've done now is because there are two containers, each of these represent a step in the form. So on the first step, I've created a couple of fields, right? So you'll also notice here that in the past you needed to add a form ID which is now lo no longer necessary because you're going into the back end and you're creating the form, all of the sections or containers that you create automatically inherit the same form ID, right? So all you have to essentially then populate is the field ID. Um, I've given it a label and because this is a conversational form um, and we're putting the fields in line, so you'll see that there's an inline option that's um, selected that gives you the option to um, create an inline label, right? So there's the label and there's the form field. So I'll show you how to create this from scratch in just a moment. I just want to take you through um, what this, you know, the composition of the form essentially, and then we'll do a, a quick example on how to create this field, right? So I've got a couple of fields. Um, I've got the name field, which is just a normal text field there. Then I've got the subject field, which is also just another text. Same thing there for applied label. I've applied the inline label toggle. Um, and then I've got an email field for the email and again, label, etc. And then on the next section, I've done the same, right? Um, no fancy things here. I've not used any auto uh, complete address fields. This is just a normal text field. 
but obviously you can use uh, address autocomplete field but for that you will need to integrate the google maps api as well right, and then i've got two buttons um, over here i've got the next step button that i've used and over here i just have the normal submit button now if we look at the settings on the container or the section um, if i head over to the pave option um, you'll see that there are a couple of options here first and foremost we've got the next and previous multi-step form we'll get to that in just a moment but if i head over to the multi-step form option here i have given this a step title because i am creating a multi-step form you don't have to um, if you want to create just a sort of a single step um, conversational form or type form like form you obviously won't go through this you'll just have a single section or a container um, and that's how you'd go about but because this is a multi-step i have created step one and if i head over to the next container same thing go to multi-step form um, i'm actually calling this step have i got the right one yes yeah, so this is step two all right and if i just go back double check that's step one okay 100 percent um and if i go to the next button and then over to the pave option down in the multi-step form i have enabled the next button and you have the option to obviously use the next or the previous action all right so once i've built the form i've built all the fields um we need to now then go and embed this form right but before we do so on the submit nothing fancy nothing new here there are some additional options that you can use to press enter to submit the form right which is also very nice you can hide the submit button after submitting but on actions for submit um, you can set this up as email or there's a number of different options that you can use you can integrate this with your uh, marketing email marketing platforms um, you can integrate with slack etc but i'm not going to go through those in details there there are a number of other videos that show you exactly how to do that um, and then on the email you can set up the various email configurations um, and obviously also you can add your entries to the form database okay so this is the form configuration template so i'll just hit update and then if i head over to the actual form or the actual page where i want to embed the form so this is the front end of the page this is the back end of the page all i'm doing here is i'm just adding the form embedding so if i go back down i'm adding the form embedding widget all right and here i have a number of different options now as well first and foremost you need to select the form that you've just created which is this one i'm indicating that this is a multi-step form there are a couple of options where you can set the multi-step form to scroll the top so if you've got a fairly long form every time it head over heads over to the next step it scrolls to the top of that form obviously um, and then you've got some multi-step form style so here i can add in the progress bar which will just add right at the top there you'll see the various steps now this is just obviously i only have two steps but this is just as it says there uh, a demo progress bar because this shows up in the front end and there are some styling options over here where i can change the step number color for normal and active state background color etc etc but i'm not going to use that in this example because i want to keep the form as simple as possible so if i just click update and i go over to the front end that's the end result right um so if i go and fill in the fields here Let's say subject is something etc click on next that works and you can fill in the rest of the information okay so let's now take a look um i'll delete this container and i'll just create a new one just so that you can see some of the styling options and how i would configure this and what i would do additionally here as well is i'll add in a previous step option so that you can navigate back um, if you need to change some information up front right so i'm just going to go ahead and i'll delete that container i'll create a new container now if you're not familiar with containers yet and how they work and how flex start flex mid flex end all that that nice stuff i'm not going to explain that um, in too much detail in this video there are also a bunch of stuff available on youtube and on the web on on how to create these but essentially um, i want to create a direction down column or a column direction form so a container so i'll select one over there and then what i'll do inside of that i'll just create an additional container i just want to set the width 
of this to the same as the previous one. Um, and then just for ease of use, uh, no, actually not, I said I'll create a new form field. So I'll go in and drag in a form field and then this container, I'll just change the direction to row or horizontal so that both of these line up side by side. And obviously if I just duplicate that container, you'll see because I've se selected the, the column direction, both of these containers will stack on top of each other, but inside of that container, they will spread um, horizontally in a row right so we'll use this one we said that's a text field and we're going to call we're going to give that a field id of town um, and i'll say i live in i'll update the inline label right so immediately here there are also independent settings of all your elements within a container i can drag this element out so essentially modifying itself right but if i go to the element and i go to advanced you'll see that there are also some aligned self settings and some width so I can go and set uh, what the width of that element is over here. But I'm not gonna make that too wide. I'll, I'll do a, a paste style in just a moment too, but just to give you an idea, right? Um, so what I wanna do, if I go back to the content of the field, first and foremost, I wanna set the label width, right? So that controls how wide the label is and how wide the field is going to be ultimately. So let me just drag this back. I wanna have it roughly there i'll adjust it again once uh, once i've updated the styling and then to style the field itself i'll go to the field styling um i'll put a solid border in i'll say at the bottom i want that to be two pixels and um, you'll see that makes a slight border radius there so i'll just set the border radius to zero um, and i'll go in on the text itself on the label um, and I'll just go and change the typography there and make it 24. Um, obviously then now I just need to go and readjust the field again. So I'll go back and I'll just set the label width so that that aligns properly, right? Um, again, same here, I can apply this multiple times and obviously because I've done it this way, I can just go and essentially duplicate this field, right? So we'll duplicate that field, we'll put one there um, and I'll just do a, a copy and I'll paste another one in there. Let's just get rid of that one, right? So I live in and next one, we wanna say that's country and that's in the label is fine. Label width, I wanna adjust just to bring that a little closer again. Um, and then lastly here, what was the other one that I had uh, address, right? And we'll say my street address is, and again, I'll just go and adjust the label width um, and I can stretch that out to make that f the same width as the other one, right? And then we'll just adjust the label width so that that aligns up. Okay, I haven't got any placeholder text in here, so I can still do that. So in terms of the placeholder text, I can go in, I live in, um, enter your town, right? And on this one, I'll go and say, enter your country. Oh, I better spell that correctly. Um, and then street address, we'll say, enter your street address. Okay, so now just from a styling standpoint, um, I'll just go and copy this and I'll paste the style, right? Because I've put some animation on there as well. By the way, let me show you how, to, how I, I did the, uh, the entrance animation. So if I select the field and I go over to the advanced tab, I go down to motion effects. I've just selected um, a, an animation to say I wanna fade in up, which just gives it that effect, right? So I'll go over and I'll say copy or paste style and the same for this one, copy and paste style. Okay, so the section, again, as I mentioned before, I wanna go over to the pave area. I wanna say on multi-step form, I wanna call this step two. And then we'll add the buttons, right? So first I'll create a new container under the form fields. So inside here I'll add a container. I'll say that that container is horizontal road direction. I'll grab a previous step button, I'll drop that in there, and I'll also add 
a submit button we'll drop that into the same container is it inside no it's actually outside come on let's just shift these around previous goes there submit goes there and then i'll uh which one space between all right so we've got the previous button uh we've got the submit button and then all i'll do is i'll copy i'll paste style right that also has some effects and i'll do the same and i'll paste style right so just on the previous button then i'll go into the paint menu previous multi-step um, and i want to set this action to go to previous and on the submit option let's do a bit of styling here so we'll select an icon we'll say i want to use the paper plane icon i want to give it some spacing actions after submit email i'm not going to change anything there right so we'll just go we'll hit update if i go back to the form embed i'll just do a quick refresh here so that it pulls in the new template right with the two steps so now we don't just have a submit button anymore but we've got a previous step and a submit button and if i head over to the front end let's try that out and see how that works right so we've got fill in the values we've got next right and let's see if that previous step works perfect and that's really all there is to it as i said um, very important if you're not using containers you know here i have but you can also use sections um, but the important thing here to remember really is just the multi-step form and the previous um, and next step form settings um, and on this page just the fact that you are now using uh, a new element which is called form embedding to embed the form and there you have it you've just created a conversational or a type form like if you're familiar with type form this is how you would create a form that looks very similar thanks again for watching i hope this tutorial was helpful um, if it was or if it wasn't you know, give it a thumbs up give it a thumbs down but if you give it a thumbs up um, it helps other people also find this content and again don't forget to subscribe tap the notification bell to stay up to date with my latest content Till next time bye for now